Well, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here in the city of Perth, not in Australia, but in Scotland, uh, where it's my sweet um, pleasure and delight to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ today, to um, seek to do so for the glory and honour of his name and to call sinners to repentance. Now, it, I've only ever preached here once before, and that was probably 20 years ago. So it's uh, great to be here. It's great to be here uh, to do this precious and uh, um, delightful work. Uh, and we'll see what happens uh, by the grace of God. Amen. Well, this seems to be the city centre, as you can see. Um, at the confluence here, there's already somebody taking the space, so I'll look for somewhere else. Well, I found a spot here uh, in front of an empty shop at the end of the high street. There's plenty of people around uh, and the time has come to preach that gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll see what happens. And uh, I thank the Lord I'm here. Father, I pray that you bless the preaching of your word, that you fill the preaching with your Holy Spirit, that the name of Jesus Christ would be lifted up, that the work of God would be accomplished, that the souls would be saved, that this country of Scotland would find mercy in the visitation of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would... Um, raise up for yourself godly men and women in this land Lord whose prayers are mighty before your throne in heaven remember those prayers of your many saints Lord who have cried out to you and mourned over the sins of the land and I pray Lord that people would turn back to Jesus Christ that the churches would be filled once more with people hungry for the word of God but above all that people would be worshipping and praising you in spirit and in truth finding your salvation finding the mercy that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So I come in weakness, Father, and pray for mercy and blessing as I preach your word now, and this I ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now to see if I can flip the camera. This is a DJI Momo uh, Pocket Pocket 2. So if I... There we go. That's it. So you can see what I can see now. And... Um, can see that this is quite busy here. So, good afternoon. I'm here to preach the gospel, to say that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, to say that He is the one who delivers from sin, He is the one that gives salvation and everlasting life, to say that the Lord Jesus Christ alone is the one that can take away our sins, to say that Jesus is the Anointed One, the Christ of God, to say that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah, and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one whom God sent and whom God gave. The Lord Jesus Christ will take away your sins. The Lord Jesus Christ will give you everlasting life if you turn from your sins and believe on him. Now without Jesus Christ, we cannot have that life that comes from God. Without Jesus Christ, our sins remain upon us. Without Jesus Christ, we remain uh, in, under the wrath of God, under the judgment of God, and we will not escape on the day of God's judgment and on the day of God's wrath if we do not repent of our sins and turn to Jesus Christ. So in the book of Acts we read, God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness and he has given us the assurance by that man whom he has appointed and he has given us assurance, the assurance in that he has raised him from the dead. God will judge the world. The almighty God, the God who reigns over the heavens and the earth, will judge every man and every woman on the day of his wrath. Every one of us must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. Every one of us must give an account and God will be our judge. God will be the one who judges us according to our sins, according to our iniquities. Now the Bible says, whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the day of judgment is a terrible day. On that day, everybody will be there. All of us will be there. Everyone who has ever lived will be there. Those who lived thousands of years ago will be there. There will be a resurrection of the just to everlasting life and a resurrection of the unjust to everlasting torment and hellfire in damnation. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. I can't, can't, sorry, what is that? That's just there. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I don't know what that, what it, that is. I'll put it on there and I'll look at it later. It might be a cult or it might be Christian, I don't know. Um, 
So Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. On the day of judgment, there will be a resurrection of the dead. That means everyone that has ever died. But also those who are still alive at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ will be called away to judgment. And there is a day of judgment to come and it is very near at hand to us all. To every one of us, that day of judgment, that day when we must stand before God. There is a God who reigns over the heavens and the earth. Now there was a time, of course, when in Scotland that was general knowledge, but not so clearly cut today. But there is a God who reigns over the heavens and the earth, one true eternal God, creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the sustainer of all things. If you have breath today, it's because God, my friends, sustains you. If you have food today, or clothing today, or shelter today, all of these good things come from God. And yet are we thankful? We are not thankful to Almighty God who gives us these good things. We're very quick to moan and groan when things go wrong. We're very quick to blame it on God, but we don't thank Him for the good things that He gives us. Furthermore, the Bible tells us that we are sinners by nature that by nature we are guilty before Almighty God, we are under the wrath of God, we are condemned by Almighty God on account of our sins, we are on the very verge of hell fire and eternal damnation, and the only thing that can save us from hell is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus who laid down his life and gave himself for sinners, the Lord Jesus who is the Saviour of the world, the Lord Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. If we find him, if we know him, if we believe on him, if we seek him, if we repent of our sins, if we find the Lord Jesus Christ. Now if you walk around Perth, for example, you will see many old church buildings. Some of them very fine buildings. Why are those buildings there, you ask? Well, you don't ask, but you should ask. I can see one from where I'm standing, just there. These buildings testify to an age and a generation when the people of God were far more concerned about their souls than they are today. A time when the people of God were far more concerned about the things of eternity than we are today. Today we are concerned about the next Marvel episode, or the next Coronation episode, or the next episode of the next episode of EastEnders, or whatever it may be. But that's what we live for in these days. We live for things. We live, well, that's good, that's good. But, uh, but to know Jesus Christ is to know life from the dead. To know Jesus Christ is to know the salvation of Almighty God. To know Jesus Christ is to know the Saviour of the world. To know Jesus Christ is to know the one who loved sinners, died for sinners, gave himself for sinners, died on the cross of Calvary, whose body was broken, whose blood was shed, so that whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ would have everlasting life. And there is everlasting life to those who know Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, cleanses from all sin. Now God will judge the world. God is the judge. God, the eternal God, the creator and sustainer of all things. God is the God who is sovereign over the actions of a single atomic particle, over every atomic particle. But God's interest is in us. God's delights is with the sons of men. God is concerned about us and he has made a way of salvation. You see, the Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That includes England and Wales. It includes Scotland. There is no escaping those words in the Bible. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now, whatever you forget today, the worst thing you can do is to forget God. There is an eternal God. There is an almighty God. There is a God of heaven and earth. There is a God of absolute moral purity and righteousness and holiness. There is a God who has the power to judge and will judge and has said that that day is very near at hand when he will judge the heavens and the earth. And the Bible tells us that God, when he judges, he will judge in righteousness. God will judge in righteousness. God is holy. 
God is pure. God dwells in everlasting light, unapproachable light. Our God, the Bible says, is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. That means that if we stand before God in our sins, then we will be consumed by His glory. We will be absolutely terrified by His holiness, by His majesty. Because that eternal God who reigns over the heavens and the earth is holy. In fact, He is the thrice holy God. The God before whom the mighty angels must veil their faces and cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Now that is the God before whom you must stand. A God who hates sin. A God who judges in righteousness. A God who turns the wicked into hell. A God who can by no means quit the guilty. A God who hates sin. Now the Bible says that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It says there is none righteous, no not one. There is none that seeketh after God. There is none righteous, no not one. We are all sinners. Or another way the Bible puts it is to say like this. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We are like silly, foolish sheep wandering away. We have wandered away from God. We, more than that, we have hidden ourselves from God. We hate God. We hate the light. We love darkness. And we will go anywhere to hide from Almighty God and to hide from His truth and from His word and from His gospel and from His salvation and from His love and from His mercy. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ alone. There is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. It is in the name of Jesus Christ alone or not at all. There is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. God's judgment is in righteousness. God is a God who hates iniquity. God is a God who hates iniquity. God is a God who will hold the government of this country to account for its sins. You cannot change sex. You cannot be a member of the opposite sex. It is impossible. It is scientifically, morally, philosophically, medically impossible. So if you're a little boy, you can't be a little girl. And if you're a little girl, you can't become a little boy. And if the teachers of our schools teach that to our children, as they do in England, for example, that is a foul and evil lie, and one that God sees. Now these things mark us out as an extremely wicked generation before Almighty God. And God sees it. Jesus said, concerning children, whosoever putteth a stumbling block in the way of one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and be cast into the midst of the sea. Much better for you to have a millstone cast around your neck can be cast into the mid middle of the sea than to be somebody whom God says, you have corrupted the children. 16-year-olds, self-identifying. God sees it, God knows it, and God's wrath is kindled by it. You cannot change sex. You cannot be a member of the opposite sex. That is quite simply impossible. There isn't a single scientific paper in the world that shows that a man has become a woman. There isn't a single scientific paper anywhere in the world that says that a woman has become a man. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And that includes you, my friends. God is not mocked. God is a God who hates sin. God is a God who is a consuming fire. God who says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. God is a God who will cast us into hell unless we repent and believe on Jesus Christ. Sin is an evil. Sin is a terrible thing. Sin is something which God hates. And God, my friends, judges in righteousness. No one can find fault with Almighty God. No one can find fault with the judgments of God. No one can find fault with the uh, when God casts a sinner into uh, into hell. <coughs> when God casts a man or a woman into hell, no one 
No one can find fault with Almighty God, with his judgments. You see, we mock God. You see, we think it's... Well, yes, you see, we mock God, and we think that, that God doesn't see us. We think that sin isn't important, but one swear word, one swear word, one foolish word, one vile word, one foul word, one evil word, one corrupt word, one sexually impure or immoral word, would justify us being cast into hell fire for eternity. The Bible speaks about hell. The Bible tells us that hell is a real place. Jesus warned us about hell more than anyone. Hell is a real place of real torment and real suffering. Hell is a place of inescapable, terrible, fiery torment and outer darkness. Hell is a place where the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man. Hell is a place into which we will be cast if we do not know the salvation that comes from God. If you do not know Jesus Christ, if you do not know Jesus Christ, then you do not know the salvation that comes from God. And if you do not know the salvation that comes from Almighty God, then you do not know the salvation of God. If we do not know Jesus Christ, our sins remain upon us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, the love and the mercy of God, that God did not just leave us in our sins to perish, but that he sent his Son. And if you think about it, well, let's start with this. There is one God, but there are three persons within the Godhead. There is a Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is God the Son. God the Father sent God the Son into the world to become the Savior of the world. So Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He is the Savior of all those who put their trust in him. He was sent by the Father. But think about this. If God the Father sends and gives the Son... And if Jesus becomes a sacrifice for sin, and if the Father freely gave him up, <coughs> and if, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 53, it pleased the Lord to smite him, if the Lord Jesus endured the agony and the torment <coughs> of crucifixion and of the death of the cross, and if he bore the wrath of God against sin in his own body, then you consider how great this salvation is. You consider how great the loving kindness of God is. You consider how great the mercy of God is. That he would set before his, us his own son, Jesus Christ, to be the saviour of the world, the saviour of sinners, the deliverer from the wrath to come of all those who put their trust in him, in Jesus Christ. God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ, my friends, was sinless, pure and holy. Jesus never told a lie. Jesus never swore. Jesus never had an impure thought. Jesus never said a bad word or a wrong thing. The Lord Jesus Christ always loved the Lord his God. God the Son always loved the Father with all his heart with all his soul, with all his mind, and with all his strength. Now, if God gave Jesus up, consider the wrath of God, consider the judgment of God against you, against you if you reject this gospel. If this gospel means nothing to you, if a crucified Savior means nothing to you, if the Lord Jesus Christ means nothing to you, so Jesus says, whoever denies me before men, I him will I deny before my, my father in heaven and the angels in heaven now now we have undying souls we have undying souls and if we do not repent of our sin death is not the end God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has appointed that's Jesus Christ my friends the man whom God has appointed to be the judge of the world is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ will either be your saviour, your saviour from all of your sin, 
for eternal everlasting life or he will be your judge for everlasting torment in hell fire again in revelation we see the final judgment we see the throne of heaven we see jesus christ seated on the throne of heaven we see all the living and the dead before the throne of god and we see the books opened and the book of life is opened and your name will be sought for and the bible says whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that's hellfire that's hellfire jesus will say to you jesus will say to you your name is not found written in the book of life depart from me cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels that's what god will say to you that's what jesus christ will say to you on the day of judgment god has appointed god the father has appointed god the son to be the judge of heaven and earth God the Father has appointed Jesus Christ to be the judge. Are you ready for the day of judgment? We need to repent of our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is alive today. God has given us the assurance, Acts tells us, in that he has raised him from the dead. Well, if it sounds strange to you, if it sounds laughable to you, that somebody is raised from the dead, resurrected, well, I can tell you this. I worked in the NHS for 30 years. And I can tell you I watch many people die. And I, with all of our technology, with all of our drugs, with all of our skills, I never saw anybody resurrected from the dead. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. It takes sovereign, deni divine power. It takes holy power. It takes the power of God to resurrect the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Jesus said, I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again that's exactly what Jesus Christ did he laid down his life on the cross and became an atoning sacrifice for sin and the Lord Jesus took up his life again the Lord Jesus took up his life he was resurrected from the dead he was raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God he is not dead he is risen Jesus Christ is raised from the dead and his resurrection is the assurance from God that there is a judgment to come, that there is a wrath to come, that God's judgment is righteous, pure and holy, and that we must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. So one swear word would see you cast into hell. One lie, if you've ever told a lie, that would see you cast into hell. The Bible says that God hates lying lips. God hates lying lips. The Bible tells us that God cannot lie God cannot lie because God is holy God is truth Jesus said I am the way and the truth and the life no man cometh unto the Father but by me so God cannot lie and the Bible says in the beginning God made us male and female in his image so what God has made cannot be changed cannot be changed I previously said it was scientifically, medically, philosophically and morally impossible, but it's also theologically impossible. What God has done is glorious, is marvellous, is wonderful, and you cannot change that. There are only two genders, because God has only made two genders, and you cannot change gender, that's impossible. If you think that, you've been lied to. If you think that, you've been lied to. And if you've been lied to, you've also believed the lie. You have also believed the lie. You're either male or female, and that can't change. That's quite clear. You cannot change your sex. It's not possible. It's impossible. There isn't a scientific paper in the world that shows that anybody has changed their sex. It's not possible. Well, in which case, that makes you a man, doesn't it? Okay, but you can't become a girl if you're a man, can you? No, you can't. That's impossible. You see, what I said, you've been taught a lie. But the Bible talks, your foul language will see you in hell. Their throat, the Bible says, is an open throat. Well, yes, I think you do. The Bible says they love darkness rather than light. But if you repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will find the salvation of Almighty God. If you repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will find that salvation which comes from God alone. And all oh, the love of God and the mercy of God, that even to sinners in Perth today, even to sinners who are worthy of death and hell, God extends his mercy. 
and God sets before you a Saviour who died and is resurrected from the dead. The Lord Jesus is not dead, he is risen bodily from the dead, raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God, raised from the dead according to the Word of God, raised from the dead and ascended and reigning. Jesus Christ today is on the throne of heaven. Jesus Christ today reigns in heaven in all the glory that belongs to God, in all the majesty that belongs to God. Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. Jesus Christ will deliver you from your sin. The Bible tells us without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. That means your sins remain upon you, your swearing, your lying, your sexual immorality and sexual sins which abound in our generation, pornography, adultery, fornication, perversion and all kinds of things. Sins which are condemned by Almighty God, sins which God calls an abomination, condemned in the Bible. We are a generation under the wrath of God. We are a generation under the fierce anger of Almighty God. His judgments are abroad in the land. Now, the Bible says that when men say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. We could be engulfed in a nuclear holocaust at any time. Vladimir Putin is threatening us with that. In all my days growing up during the Cold War, we never saw anything like that. And then again, there are talks about other things. There was the earthquake in Turkey. We've all seen the pictures of that. People taken away in their sleep in great numbers. And we think that would never happen here. But God says in his word, there will be a mighty earthquake in which all of the nations, all of the cities of all of the nations will fall. So if we believe the Bible, and I believe the Bible with all my heart, the day will come when Perth will be destroyed in an earthquake. Are you ready in your heart, in your life, in your mind, in your soul? Are you ready to meet your God? Are you ready to stand before the God of heaven and earth? Are you ready to give an account? Are you ready to answer to God? Because only Jesus Christ will get you there. And no one else can do that. He is the Savior of the world. He is the one who has loved sinners and given himself for sinners, who died for sinners and is raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. And what God requires us to do is to repent of our sin, to turn from our sin, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who is alive today and whom the Bible says is near at hand to those who call on his name. Say, where is God? Where is Jesus? Near at hand if you call on him. But you must call on him. You must call on him with all your heart. You must repent of your sin. God looks at the heart. I don't know anything about you except that you swear and swear words will take you to hell. I don't know anything about you except that, but God knows everything about you. God knows everything about you. And God says that you are a sinner. And he says you need to repent of your sin. And he says you need to believe on his son. You need to believe on Jesus Christ. And he says there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. So if you don't find Jesus, you remain in your sins. And if you don't find the Lord Jesus Christ, you remain under the wrath of God. Now we need to turn from our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to turn from our sins and seek the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to turn from our sins and find the Lord Jesus Christ. I became a Christian 41 years ago. 41 years ago, I became a Christian. 41 years ago, I came to know Jesus Christ for myself. Now, before that, I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Saviour, but 41 years ago, I found Jesus Christ, and 41 years ago, he saved me from my sin. And I'm no less saved today than I was 41 years ago. And I'm no more saved, because Jesus did it all. He, he forgave my sins. He washed away my sins in his precious blood. He delivered me from my sin. He gave me salvation. He gave me everlasting life. And the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for sinners. He was pure, sinless, holy, righteous, spotless. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the Lord Jesus Christ will take away your sin and deliver you from your sin and give you salvation 
and everlasting life if you believe on him. Turn from your sins, turn from your evil ways, turn from lying, swearing, stealing, fornication, adultery, drunkenness, drug taking, unbelief. The sin of sins is unbelief. To hear this gospel and not to believe. Do you know that on the day of judgment, God will, God will bring to your attention that today, the 13th of February, 2023, in the city centre of Perth, you heard this gospel. And God will bring that to your remembrance and present it before you. And unbelief is the sin of sins. To hear this gospel and not to believe, to hear about Jesus Christ, to hear that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To believe, to hear that, but not to respond to it. Oh, my friends, how will you stand on the day of judgment? The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that every sin will receive its just recompense and reward. Every sin. The sins we do in public and the sins we do in private. The sins that others see, the sins in our hearts that no one else sees. When we're greedy in our hearts. When we are, when we are aggressive in our hearts. When we are impure in our hearts. God sees it. The Bible tells us that God looks at the heart. The Bible tells us that God is a God who looks at the heart. He is a God who knows us through and through. I don't know anybody here today. I don't know anybody, my friends. But God knows us all. And he says that he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has appointed. He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has appointed. And that man is Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Deliverer from the wrath to come. And he will save you if you put your trust in him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, I, I don't know who else comes here and preaches here. I trust that there are some who do. And um, thank God for enabling me to preach today. And uh, I just pray, um, Father, I pray for those who mocked and I pray Lord that you'd have mercy on those sitting on the bench opposite who mocked and swore and I pray Father that you would pour out your spirit on Perth pour out your spirit on Edinburgh on Glasgow Lord and on Scotland and have mercy upon this nation Lord and all that the name of Jesus would be lifted up here and that you strengthen and bless everyone who preaches your gospel here that your salvation would be visited here and that your mercy would be found here and there'll be someone, Lord, who's, who finds you today, finds you because you, they've heard this message, they've heard this word. But, oh, Lord, have mercy on the city of Perth, I ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.